sudden there's a camera. Hello, Kai. How are you doing? Hello. I'm dead. Not been on air in a while. You haven't. We've been missing you. Everything's changed. My office has changed. Your office has changed. Just a little bit. And and you're lo you're looking very red tonight, Kai. It must be said. Coordinating. Color coordinating with the, the lipstick, complete with the headphones, and obviously the special guest on the show tonight is Barbie. Barbie. <laughs> Quite fantastic. And Martin. And, 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 and Martin in the background. Hello, Martin in the background. It's really, that, actually a green screen. I just like to have it there to make me feel less lonely. It, it's really realistic, that green screen you have. Yeah. <laughs> So, folks, a few bits and pieces before we get down to business. We're going to dive into the Wildstar patch notes in just a moment. Um, we'll look at what that actually reveals. We're going to look at a little bit of the news that's been happening. Of course, we all know about war plots and the big reveals. We might talk a bit about the things that people aren't yet perhaps talking about. Wonder what's going to come up between now and launch and what that schedule looks like. And we might ask you guys in the channel what you want to know about Wildstar, and we'll see if we can answer. And, of course, a few of you might just be here because, well, did, did we have something to give away, Kai? I think so. Something that people want. Ooh, what could They're people want? They're craving it. See, cheese. I'm, I'm... Cheese. We, 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 we have <laughs> cheese. I didn't get to eat all the cheese. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm, I'm going to have to introduce the other voiceover voice. The other voiceover voice? That'd be that voiceover voice. Hello. That is the voice of the roller. Currently operating MMO Buff. Say hello, the roller. Hello, everybody. How are you doing tonight? Also known as an Ico. An Ico will be attending to all of your Wildstar key needs. Now, please remember, these are EU keys. So, if you create an account, an NCSoft account with one of these keys, although this weekend it will just log you into the general beta server, I believe, you do need to make sure that it's going to be you are creating an EU account. If you log into it in the future, it's going to be on an EU server. So please don't get yourself confused. You don't want to be in the wrong territory and have crazy lag. No, nope, that wouldn't Forever. be good. Mm -hmm. Or you could just make a new account every weekend. But... Now, I'm being told we're a little quiet. <laughs> do I need to turn up the volume levels here? I can do that. By the power of that. Yeah, I think they said me and Ico are quiet. You should now be a little louder. How Hello. This is me you're looking for. <laughs> is it going to be the musical edition? Is, is it going to be I, I, Cosmotronic I, I, in a hundred songs? <laughs> I, I've got to say I am far too sober to be a disembodied singing voice. <laughs> yeah, with no face. <laughs> I can always turn myself down if I'm too loud, and I've just turned Kai and Iko up. How now is that? Is that a little more balanced? Oh now, brown cow. Oh no, brown cow. As we go into Keep more moving. songs. So, before <laughs> we kick off, it is going to be a giveaway token, Mikus. It is preposterous. And Kai and Iko are still a bit quiet. Now try. Hello. 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 You, you are now, you've now had your volume get, turned up to 11. Gonna get louder. There we go. More balanced but quiet still. It's now on maximum volume at this end. So if everything's balanced, you'll just have to twiddle your own volume settings, I'm afraid, people. But that should help. Cool. I'll okay. turn myself up a little bit. Whoa. So let's dive straight in. Um, our, our friendly roller is going to be starting to give away EU keys for people that are here. Um, Robots Hate Me doesn't want a key. Robots Hate Me wants a Rouse Tower. <laughs> you mean one of these? Yeah, where's my Rouse Tower? <laughs> I it's, haven't got one. It's actually currently... <laughs> the Rouse Tower died. It's currently inside a Rousedower approved um, eco friendly, Rousedower friendly shipping container, complete Ooh. with air holes and extra food. And I do believe okay. it's currently being transported from PAX to here and is currently en route. 
Ooh, okay, I'll let you off. I said you're not allowed to come back from PAX unless you have roused hours. <laughs> I arranged to get them shipped. I didn't think it was fair to put the roused hours in the suitcase. That wouldn't be no, allowed. No, that'd be sad. So yes, put lops in a suitcase, but not roused hours. <laughs> So Zoe Sherlock, um, yes, it probably does mean you won if your name was picked up by the voice of the roller. So let's kick let's kick things off for a moment. Aiko, do you, do you like to, to give a couple of keys away? Um, I am. As, as we've been going on for the show, I thought my what well, I was going to do is just keep on running the uh, the giveaways as the, uh, as the show rolls on, and just keep it fair. That, that was my plan to do it, and just send these out as I do them to stay on top. So there I'm we going go, to folks. Kind of stay quiet. Yes, yeah, okay. so what you have to do is just sit here and enjoy keep, the show and you might get a key. Keep yourself yeah, sure. a list, please. And every so often we'll ask you to, to give us the names of the people you've been giving giving the keys to so they know, so there's no confusion. Okay. So let's start with a little bit of content. So we've had patch notes come out from The Cheese, aptly named. Please. I approve of this name. And uh, so a few things have come up that are going to be big differences. Um, some of you may have noticed when you're running around in doing ship hands, uh, and perhaps we can explain what a ship hand is for those who don't know. It's got a little laggy, and that apparently is now fixed. And that's a good thing, because the ship hand missions are awesome. Yes. Especially, I think, is it the level, the one you do at, like, level 30-ish? The crazy one where you have, like, space robots and rainbows, yeah. and, like, it's like you're on acid, you're like, oh. It is, it is yeah. crazy, but I still like the first one. I still like the walking around, kind of like the scene from Aliens in the ship with the light yeah. and, like, what's going your on. Light. Where, where is yeah, the face hugger going to come from next? <laughs> um, yep. So that, that was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of server crashes, stability stuff's been dealt with. Uh, you can no longer get stuck under the ground. That's always good. Like well, NPCs like to be underground. Yeah, that's probably going to che cheer up the graveyard guy. Maybe we can put him <laughs> underground. <laughs> now, is it me or is the graveyard guy either the most annoying person in the world or the most fantastic person in the world? And I haven't quite made my mind up yet. I wouldn't I think... know. I don't get to meet him that much. Oh, no. Well, like, if you're running dungeons or, like, something like that, you hear it quite a lot, I guess. But I don't know. If it was, like, a funny death, that he adds, like, comedic value, and you've like, oh, yes. this is so funny, like, because you'll hear a line you've never heard before. But if it's, like, a, re a repetitive death, you're just like, he says one more thing. I'm just going to, like, throw my PC out the window. Yes. So it's kind of like... A fine line, I think, with him. I think he's... Does he have a name? He's being referred to as Graveyard Guy. Does anyone know what he's actually called? Is it the caretaker that does it? I... No. I know the caretaker... No. So the caretaker does the trans map when you portal to your, like, wherever you want to go. He does that, but I don't know who does I that. I think either. Graveyard Guy is just Graveyard Guy. That's it. It's just does graveyards. Nothing else. Nothing more. Um, OXZ, where is the source? Uh, if it's an official source, please do. Apparently there's stalker elements that are not in the patch notes, but a link for them. Now, I do know there were some unofficial notes that went out the place in, around the place. We'll keep those away if that's all right. But if it's anything from an official source, please feel free. Yeah, all I can see for stalker is... Um... Some changes with auto detecting stealth they don't get stuck now when like certain creatures they fix some visuals uh, stalkers cannot evade the watchful eye of elden constructs so basically you yeah. can't just sneak around uh, npcs have been adjusted to better detect stealth units that aren't moving and after using a slim drone while stealth the player will return to being fully stealth after a half a second delay so just some changes i don't see a massive nerf unless they're not official notes no, well, let's look. Let's just. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bring up this link now, because I'm intrigued. Uh, I must admit, OX, OXZ, I don't actually play a stalker. Um, so yeah, so I wouldn't know if much was a nerf. To be fair, it's like, oh, that sounds fun. I, I, can, I can always ask our disembodied voice. He might. He might actually know. I have not had a chance to have a hands-on this beta patch yet. I've literally got home and the servers are so unstable that I've got home and had to dive into the show, so I've not had any playtest time with this particular patch yet. Okay. Um, as the stalkers. We shall investigate. We shall discover. We shall come back. But I mean, stalkers, I don't think, I don't think any of the classes are in a terrible place right now. Um, people are always going to say, buff this, nerf that, this thing's overpowered, I'm underpowered. Raw. But that's, that's just. 
Yeah. Um, I hear more comments in general about people saying good things than I do negative things. Um, I'm not saying any balance is final, any balance is perfect. Um, we'll have to, we'll have to see. I don't think balance in any MMO has ever been perfect. I think no. the kind of fun part of it is sometimes that it's like a little bit unbalanced and that's why it's fun. I don't know. Because then if you play the like unbalanced, like, or, you know, you know, the weak class and you still like yeah. perform really well, you can kind of be like, yeah, but like my yeah. class is underpowered and I'm still amazing. <laughs> And over time, um, I mean, if you look at, say, WoW, it's been around forever. There's been there's been seasons where hunters were the bees knees. There's been seasons yeah. <laughs> where hunters were not. <laughs> it's yeah. the politest way I can phrase it. And it's good to know that, you know, over time, it'll, it'll ebb and flow. And I think if you stick with a class, if you're happy with your class, you enjoy your class, stick with it. Um, I don't personally go for all this, hey, let's do flavor of the month stuff all the time. It's just... Doesn't, no, doesn't quite work. I'll only play Esper. I think even if Esper got super nerfed, it's like the one I enjoy the most. So I'd only play that. Yeah, and I'm I'm definitely going to be a stalker, but it's definitely a stalker. I lie. I'm definitely going to be a spell slinger, <laughs> um, and it's definitely going to have to be a an Orin spell slinger. I feel. Yes, it's the only medic way. Yeah, a disembodied oh, rolling voice is going to be a medic. <laughs> um. X what three um three Lonux. I don't know if that's pronounced correctly or not. It's probably not. <laughs> um, these are EU keys we're giving away. Um, so if you create an NCSoft account with one of these keys, it will be an EU account. So Which there doesn't we go. matter this weekend. You can you'll still be playing on an American server regardless this weekend. Yeah. But bear that in mind that if you then pre-order on this account, it will be an EU pre-order, which means you'll fit forever have to play on it. So if you do win a key here, the best thing to do is create a new NCSoft account just for purposes of and playing on the EU beta, basically. Yeah. The best the thing we can advise. Way. Okay, let's look at what else we've actually got. And as we have a few people here, um, Guys, if you're not used to the show or what we do, we tend, sometimes it's quite structured. We have a big topic. We have myself, we have Kai, we have Gazimov. And of course, we have Sudo. So best wishes to Sudo, who's currently ill in bed. So I'm the only ill one here. She, she, she's busy being <laughs> ill. She, she's got that monopoly. Yeah, she, she's mine. trying to out illify you, I'm afraid, Kai. Yeah. So uh, we wish we wish her well. Um, so sometimes it's quite structured, but today is going to be a bit of a little random. Just talk about a few things and see where we go. Um, a few notes from the patches, though, the patch notes that are a little interesting. Um, I saw one that made me chuckle. Um, backpack slots past 80 are now usable. What? Has anyone out there got an 80 slot backpack that I don't know about? If they do, like, where, where's mine? You can get four twenties. I've seen them. I've never seen a twenty slot one. I've seen the ones for elder gems. I think they're like sixteen, maybe. I'm not sure, but um, I saw those on the vendors. But I've never seen an eighty slot. That'd be a. Could you imagine how big your inventory would be? Just like four eighty backpacks, like. Yeah. Can you imagine having like an 80 slot backpack on your back, having to like walk around the place, especially if you're like a level five character because you're not very strong. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just, no, anyway. Um, Probably like Skyrim where you get slower because you're heavy. <laughs> See, that makes sense. You never get that in MMOs. Like, you just no. can't keep on carrying things and so you magically hit this limit. <laughs> You've got like four mounts just in your pocket. <laughs> But I mean, whilst I have some little holes like that, like when you can remotely receive loot rewards, and it's like, wait a minute, how did this physically get from where the quest yeah. giver is to where I am? I don't <laughs> understand. Now, one thing they've changed in this particular set of patch notes to do with physically being in location are the dive vendors. Um, so now, of course, you do need to be in that capital city to use that dive. What, what do we think about that? Um, I'm sorry, I look at you. Ah, I do so you, if you have, you have to be in the city to dye your gear at all. You I can't think dye anywhere else. If, if I'm reading the patch notes correctly, yeah. I have not had a chance to log in yet. So if someone here can tell us. Um, you actually now need right. to be talking to the the, you know, the dye station, the dye vendor, to use the stuff. Yeah, so, and also I've noticed another change is at the moment I don't know if it's a bug or whether it's like an intentional thing, but you can't actually dye the armor you're wearing now. You can only dye costume pieces yep. so 
if you wanted to change the color of the armor you've actually got equipped, so say you know you're a raider, it's, you're getting to the Elder Game content, you get this really cool bit of gear, but you don't like the color, you can't change the color of that bit of gear. You have to either obtain another bit of gear that looks like it and dye it, or unequip that bit of gear, dye it in the costume piece. So for me, yeah, that doesn't seem that seems weird. Like you can't dye your raid gear anymore. Can you look over your shoulder? We're, we're being epi uh, epically trolled. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like trying not to die. <laughs> we're being licked by a pug. I wondered what Iko was doing. I was like, oh my! I thought I'd said something that I wasn't allowed to say. I was like freaking out. I was like, oh my god! Oh my god. Um, okay, let's but see. Yeah, what... I find that weird. Yeah, I mean, it's, but it's there's something to be said about how you can change the colours and stuff, particularly of raid gear. Um, quite often, you know, those raid shoulders are the epic piece that identifies that I went and killed the space goat. Look at me, I'm awesome. Yeah. And I get the green shoulders of space goat killiness, or whatever we want <laughs> to call them. And if someone else can go and get a similar model and just dye it green and match match them, that doesn't work very well for me. So I like there to be some control and some constraints about what you yeah, can dye, where true. you can dye, what you can dye. To be fair, I plan on just wearing the Elden costume throughout, throughout the entire game. I'm not going to take it off. Yep. Just wear that. <laughs> I love it. Now, a few other things. Uh, repair costs are now calculated correctly. So no more of the oddity of, why do I now have no plat? <laughs> um, bags now have the correct levels. Uh, a lot of little things like that. Not too many major things for classes. Do engineers um, yet have their new resource meter in? I know that one was being talked about. Looking at engineers, um, all I can see is something about amps. So I, don't, yeah, no. I believe a number of amps were incorrectly labeled for the wrong class. So for example, some Spellslinger yeah. ones were marked as being Esper ones. Uh, they're now marked as Spellslinger ones. Um, so that's always a good thing. Now, someone's just said to us, do you need to sub to get keys? Absolutely, categorically not. Um, you don't need to do anything at all. You don't even need to follow. We'd like you to. We'd love you to let people know we're here, but that's simply our request. As to winning stuff, anyone can win anything at all just by being here, just by taking part. Just by watching. Just by watching. Now, someone's just said, obviously doesn't know Wildstar particularly, particularly well at this point, what is Wildstar like? Awesome. Now that's a one word answer. Kai, could we perhaps get the one or two paragraph answer? Yeah, so basically Wildstar is a MMO, which is essentially a multi mass multiplayer online roleplay game, but Wildstar is set in a sort of space sci-fi universe. Um, it's got the very similar sort of basis as something like World of Warcraft, but it's a, a lot newer, I feel. Um, some of the ways that you do combat, for example, you can move, you dodge out of telegraphs. It's not static or, or stationary. Or, or not dodge out of telegraphs, as the case may be. Yeah, or not, <laughs> if you want to die. Um, so it, it has a very modern feel to it. Graphically, it's probably one of the best MMOs that I've mm. seen. I think it but that, again, depends on personal preference and art style. Um, but there are loads of different things you can do. So not only do you pick your race and your class, you can pick a path. And a path will affect the way that you level throughout the game, the type of content that you'll encounter more often. So if you pick a soldier, for example, you'll do a lot of holdouts and you'll have to kill a lot of things or go on like assassination missions. Or if you pick a settler, you are someone that likes to help your community and you'll collect various different items and build taxis or vendors around the place. So you really get to choose how you want to play. And then in a very MMO sense, you level up to 50. There's dungeons, there's adventures, there's the PvP, and then you get to Elder Game and you've got raids, you've got veteran dungeons, War you've got plots. war plots, 40-40 yeah, PvP content. So there is a lot of stuff that uh, you can do, but it is still... A traditional MMO in that sense, where you you won't log in and be like, "What is this?" Yeah, one one thing is fair to say is not to confuse the the. Can we call it cutesy? Can we call it a cutesy art style? Yeah, it's, it's very dis. It's very like the recent Disney, like Tangled mm. and Frozen. It's that art style. It's the same guy actually. Okay, so... people keep telling me I need to see Frozen. I still haven't seen Frozen. Ah, oh, so good. Oh, means you need to let it go. <laughs> Okay. 
Do you even know the, do you know the songs though? I don't do you think not, so. Like, even know the... I don't you think know, so. I knew every word of every song before I even saw the film. <laughs> Most unlikely not to know all the words of a song. I mean, that, this is something. <laughs> But let's. The point I was going to make here about the game. A lot of people don't know the game. They come in, they see this rich, vibrant world, these colourful graphics, this this, this gameplay. Mm. Go, it's going to be another wow. I'm going to run round. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I'm dead again. Yeah. And again. And again. And again. Because it is not the world's simplest game in terms of difficulty level, and that's something they're deliberately going for. It starts off not too scary. You get to do your, you get to do your thing. You level up. You learn about your class, and your class you keep learning basics about your class until about level seventeen, twenty, depending on the class. Yeah, I'd uh, say that. I think that's why they set the restriction for non-pre-orders to about that level, quite on purpose, to let you experience all the different classes. So you get to learn the basics of your character in the first twenty levels, and it's this big learning experience. And telegraphs are a big thing. Little markers on the ground. Step in the marker on the ground. You either get healed or you get damaged when it was green or red or whatever you've set your colours to. And then it starts to get a little harder. Bit by bit, step by step. <laughs> until all of a sudden, it's really quite tricky. Um, I remember going into Storm Talon, which is the very first dungeon, quite a while ago now, um, at level, I think, 18. And this is the first dungeon you run into in the game. And I'm fighting a boss, as you do in a dungeon. And all of a sudden, we're teleported to the back of the room. There's whirlwinds and tornadoes flying in. You've got to run this gauntlet of tornadoes. And it struck me from a raiding background, the level of awareness you had to have to move through that gauntlet without being hit was akin to raiding that I've done in other games. And yeah, I, I agree. Wildstar Dungeons is raid level in previous MMOs I've played. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say raid heroic. I'd, I'd say raid no, yeah. normal. Um, I, I wouldn't say LFR either if people are looking for that <laughs> connotation. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a little harder than that. But the level 50 dungeons I've done during beta weekends mm -hmm. with people from Enigma and we've been in there like two or three hours and just got to a point where we've been so tired that we just couldn't continue and it was yep. that difficult that we didn't complete it like it it really was difficult and that wasn't even a veteran that was just level 50 dungeon yeah and you do them a few times you know, get to the point where you can kind of cut through them a bit more but when you first go in it's just whoa what's happening so it's a foundation for a big deep game all the elements you know from MMOs are there but the combat is freeform and much more reactionary much more uh, you're much more in control of your character one thing that WoW got very right that this game gets very right um, is how connected you are to your character whilst playing it's really really the character is attached to your fingers there's no perceptible delay it doesn't feel clunky it just feels yeah. good running around. Yeah, I agree. And everything's so quick paced as well. Like you can't think, oh, like, you know, my rotation, I'm just going to be like one, three, four, seven, eight, two. Like you can't do that. You can't have a rotation mm -hmm. in Wild Star. You can have, you know, like a, more of a skill priority system, which, you know, Raiders in WoW will be familiar with, especially people who played like rogue classes, for example. And you have like a, a priority system, so, you know, if this is up, that's the skill you want to use first. And Wild Star is very similar, but you also never know what's going to happen. Even if you know a fight inside out, suddenly a telegraph that normally appears on the right side of the room is on the left side of the room yeah. and you're in it. And it's like, oh, I need to get out. And you know, my whole DPS is you know, flying everywhere. And I think in WoW, if you were melee, it was very much, I'm just going to stand still and hit the boss. And that was it. And especially for tanks, as well, you just stood there. Whereas even in dungeons in Wildstar, tanks are having a lot harder job. Like you have to be a lot more skilled. It's not just tank and spank fights. It's a lot of movement, and that is quite tricky for a lot of people. Yeah, the the mindset is very much uh, continually making smart choices while you play, and part of that is well, uh, I want to use my rapid fire ahead of my quick burst, but then I'm moving and there's something coming from the right that's going to squish me so i've only got time to get off a quick burst so i'll use my quick burst instead whilst continuing to track sideways around this thing so yeah. even a priority list is good but you still have to adapt to what's going on much more so than in anything else i've played so that's always a good thing now another thing that people might know a lot about big big part of the game 
housing. Yes. Housing there, is fun. So there is housing. You, um, yeah, you can get your house at first at level 14. Um, so in beta, if you level up that high, you'll be able to get access to a house. And um, basically you get like your own little plot of land in a floating island in the sky. And at first you can get, um, you can pick a house from one of the races on your faction. So you, if you are exile, for example, you can pick like a granite house or an Orin house or a human house, like depending on what you want, uh, it doesn't matter what race you are. And then you decorate your house on the inside and you change the wallpaper and the floors and the items that you get around the world from crest swords, or you can buy them off the auction house because people can actually craft them as well. And you can face them like you no know, big or small, whatever you want in your house. Did you see the grand piano that person made from like 400 different objects? Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, oh, that. And imagine if you wanted to move it. I know you can link them together, but still, it would just be like... I don't Ooh. believe linking works beyond a certain number of items. No. Uh, I think, but I think, it's I, crazy what you can do. Yeah, I mean, that's about eight hours' work, I do believe, for that individual. But it's a very cool piano. Um, yeah. One thing then about housing to talk about is the fact it has this idea of plugs. Now, plugs come into the game all over the place. So what, it, what is a plug? Well, we've seen plugs. They go into sockets on the wall normally for powering your iPod. But on this occasion, using a similar system in game, they have in your house, in your housing plot, um, in dungeons, in places in, in the open world sometimes, plugs. And the game designer can put a thing in a plug, much like a, a socket, sorry, can put a plug into a socket, much like you can actually imagine. And the plugs in your house are the places where you can put things. And it could be a tree, it could be a giant watermelon, um, it could be almost anything. And you use the idea of these plugs and sockets to build stuff. You could have a, a festival party in, in your back garden or a firework display. Um, I don't know. So, Kai, what, what are your favourite things in the house? What have, what have you found in housing that delights you? Um, my favourite things are that at Elder Game you'll be able to have raid portals, which I think is amazing because the world of Nexus, Nexus is huge. So with you know, a buff? There can take, yeah, with a buff. Um, you can also have uh, farm patches and patches to mine things, like any material that you want to craft you can kind of like grow in your garden which is really good and as you said mentioned the uh festival things that you can i can't remember exactly what it's called it's a festival thing that you plant basically plug into your land and every day you can collect some food from it that is relevant to your level mm -hmm. which i think is really good especially if you don't uh have cooking as one of your trade skills or you just haven't leveled it up you can just collect some food every day so you can go about like your daily quests and still have stuff to eat um i like those things i think it it adds like your own sort of in. I mean, if you played WoW, you Hearthstone to your in every night before you log out. Whereas in Wildstar, you will teleport back to your house.